being who thought he knew better than Allah was Iblis. When Allah told Iblis to do sajda to Adam, what did Iblis say? I'm not going to do sajda to him. I'm better than him. You created me from fire, you created him from clay. Doesn't make sense to me. It's not logical and rational to me that I should prostrate to an inferior species. We have in our history the very first case of somebody preferring his own intellect over the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know what is the fate of this. And anybody who prefers his own intellect over the Quran has an element of Iblis in him. Very frankly, has an element of Iblis in him that I think I know better than the Quran. Let me give you an example of Stockholm and myself. I come to Stockholm for the first time, as I have come. I don't know who is anybody in the city. So I find a Muslim in the streets, I say, Akhi, can you tell me, where is the Sheikh of Stockholm? Where is the Mufti of Stockholm? Where is the greatest scholar of Stockholm? So this man will say, I know, here, take me by the hand. He'll take me to the Mufti. He'll say, this is our Mufti. This is our greatest scholar. So I ask the scholar my question. The scholar gives a response. And he says, this is what you need to do. Then my guide will tell me, no, 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 no. You cannot listen to the Mufti, he's wrong. And because I led you to the Mufti, I must be more knowledgeable than the Mufti. So now you need to listen to me instead of the Mufti. What is all of this example? In this case, the Mufti is the Quran and Sunnah. And this guide is the human intellect. The guide that leads us to the Quran is our Aql. Once we are guided to the Quran, the role of the Aql does not take supremacy over the role of the Mufti, the role of the Quran. You see the example here, right? And so Ibn Taymiyyah says, if this were to happen to you, you would say to the guide that you testified that he is the scholar of Stockholm. So now that you've testified, you have no right to disagree. Because you have testified that this is the Shaykh of the city. And the fact that you led me to the Shaykh does not make you the Shaykh. Similarly, the Aql and the Quran. The Aql leads you to the Quran. Once you know the Quran to be true, you cannot use the Aql to reject the Quran. The Aql tells you, if this is the Quran, I must believe in it. If this is what Allah says, I must believe in it. I might not understand everything, but I must believe in it. And this is not only rational, it is also what Islam itself demands. The intellect is a faculty, a sense that Allah has given us. It has its limits and it has its realm of operating. If we use it within that realm, it's perfect. Like our eyes. We use our eyes to see immediately around us in the broad daylight. It's great. If somebody tries to use his eyes to see in pitch black, what's going to happen? He'll make a fool out of himself. If somebody tries to use his eyes to see five miles away, it's not going to happen. So the aql has also a role. It has a limited place. You use it within that place, and yes, you will go to the moon and come back. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. But if you try to extrapolate it beyond its place, and you start challenging the Qur'an, saying this doesn't make sense, this ayah is astaghfirullah nonsensical, this ruling is backward and uncivilized. Now you have taken the aql and taken it beyond. You're like a person trying to see in a black room, in a dark room. It's not going to happen. Also realize that for the non-Muslim, the purpose of the intellect is to be guided to Islam. And for the Muslim, the purpose of the intellect is to understand Islam, to challenge Islam. In fact, the very first verse of the Quran is what? Surah Al-Baqarah. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ You simply believe in the unseen. The Quran tells you many things that are beyond the realm of the intellect. The Quran can never contradict the intellect, but the Quran might astound the intellect with what knowledge it has. The Quran will bring knowledge the intellect can never have. For example, angels, heaven and hell. Scientifically, can we prove angels exist? No. Subhanallah, forget angels. Can we prove our own bodies have ruh inside of it? Ruh, soul. Can science prove we have a ruh? Wallahi, you can invent any scientific apparatus, anything, and it will not be able to detect whether you have a soul or not. Ya yeah, subhanallah, if we cannot even detect our souls, 
Are we going to then use science to derive everything from around us? No. Science has a role. Keep it in its role. Don't take it beyond its role. And we conclude by stating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us and created our intellects amongst us. And He has also revealed our scripture. And the two of them are meant to be used in harmony. The two of them are meant to be used together as a cooperation. And when we use our intellect to believe in the Qur'an and to understand the Qur'an, then we are using it in complete harmony and we will reach the pinnacle of our humanity. But if we attempt to derive a clash, to bring forth a contradiction, then we will lose out on our intellect and we will also lose out on believing in the Qur'an.